welcome back to the beautiful Petchabon. Bit of a different video today. This is one of my favorite parts of Thailand and somewhere that I was thinking about maybe potentially one day in the future building a home for myself in. So we're going to be looking at some plots of land, some homes for sale. So yeah, we're going to have a bit of a nosy around and we'll have some adventures as well. Don't you worry. So relax. Let's pick things up bright and early at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You know, if Thailand was a computer game, then I think it's fair to say that we completed it when we went to every single province and most of the islands. And whilst I was playing that game, I was thinking, okay, what level would I like to play on repeat? <laughs> AKA, you know, where would I like to maybe build a home one day? You know, I was constantly looking like, where would I want to live in this beautiful kingdom one day, maybe in the future? And Pecha Bun was really high up on that list. As you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous and it has an amazing climate all year round. It never gets super hot and it stays cool throughout the year and relatively dry. It's also home to one of the best temples in the world. My favorite temple in the whole of the country, if you watch my best temple video. This is the temple on the glass cliff and over there is the beautiful mosaic Chedi. Absolutely incredible piece of art. This is an absolutely incredible, beautiful temple. And what I want to do today is show you around some potential plots of land that are for sale and just have a little nosy around some of the local neighborhood because I think this is a bit of a sleeper province and if you're interested like me in maybe moving to Thailand one day and building a home or buying a place then strap in let's explore Pecha Bun <laughs> So this entire area of Pechabun province is called Khao Ko. It's about 800 meters in elevation, a lot higher up on that mountain there, which by the way, that's gonna be the finale of this episode. I'm gonna try and drive Zelda up to the top and get an amazing view of sunset. I'm trying to look down onto this amazing temple complex and the valleys below. It really is something to behold early in the morning. Although when I came here yesterday to sort of scope out how beautiful this place is, and remind myself because I came here a long time ago. Today I've come back to film and it's Saturday. So you look, it's absolutely ram jam packed. It's just like anywhere, isn't it, Thailand? Weekends are gonna get packed. And one thing I didn't show you last time I was here, but there is incredible mosaic work on the floor. And like I said, the chedi across the way, that's completely covered in mosaic. Some of the most amazing mosaic work I've ever seen on earth is here in this temple and there's a jewel i never noticed that there's a jewel a wow a big ruby on the actual floor in fact all around this temple are these circular spheres and they represent the planets and the different dimensions and the different elements depending on what color they are and it's super fascinating i have a whole video on this temple i have another video on Khao Ko. i'll link all my petra bun videos in the description if you want to learn more about the province in general but today we're just going to focus on you know potentially maybe one day buying a plot of land here so yeah come and enjoy the beautiful temple on the glass cliff the gorgeous mosaic chedi um, but we've we've made a video about here before so let's drive down into the little valley near where i'm staying and let me show you a really interesting potential plot of land that you can purchase So just to give you a little bit of reference where Khao Ko is, it's in the Pecha Bun province, which is kind of in the north. And you can see that there's a few provinces, Singbury, Lotbury, in between here and Bangkok. It's on the border of Isan and the north. And as you can see, an absolutely beautiful part of the world. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of living in Pechabun. 
Let's start with the pros because they're pretty obvious, aren't they? Have a look at this place, it's absolutely outrageous. You've got the luscious green mountains, the blue skies, and what you can't see on the camera is the cool temperature. It's now, what is it? It's now 1.30 in the afternoon, hottest part of the day. Yes, I'm wearing t-shirts and the shorts, but it's about 23, 24 degrees. It doesn't get absolutely boiling here during the year. We're 800 to 1,500 meters up, especially when we go up there later in the video, hopefully. So the weather is cool and temperate. And as you've seen this morning, you know, there's incredible temples here. Lots of things to see and do. It's quite touristy and there's a, like, there's a zoo, there's a dinosaur park, there's a bunch of other cool historical sites that we did delve into when we were on the tour here earlier in the year. And another pro to this area in particular, as you can see, it's quite easy to buy individual plots of land. It looks like land developers have come in, bought huge areas of land, we call them rye in Thailand. This is probably, I don't know, 200 rye, and they've actually put white picket fences around it seems to be one or two rye. I'm not actually familiar with how big a rye is, I apologise. But anyway, you can see it's all been sectioned out. And it's not just here, it's all around this area. So you might think, okay, that's a, that's a pro. Because look, if you look behind me, someone's built a house, or they're building a house, on a plot of land within this community, and they're the only ones here. You know, I just drove around, that's the only development, that's the only house that is being built. It looks like it's gonna be gorgeous, looks like a five, six bedroom house. Maybe I'll buy a plot of land and start building a house in Thailand. I would love to. And this area is one of the best areas of the country, as I've told you. Beautiful, good weather, look at it. And you can build a home like this, and I think the land would be relatively cheap compared to other places, especially back home, right? And building a home's cheaper here, and yeah, it all seems to be set up for the perfect life. But as I've driven around, and, and I'll show you right now, sometimes, potentially, anyway, it might go a little bit wrong. Before we leave, let's have a little closer look at this house that they're building up here. You can see here, there seems to have been some sort of failed project. They put down some foundations, they dug a hole for some reason, and it didn't quite come to fruition. And then you can see the other plots of land here. They're all slightly different sizes and slightly different shapes, mostly square or rectangular. And this is the, the show house maybe they're building, or maybe this is the guy who had the first dibs. Quite a big, huge unit actually. And there's some Thai guys working on it. You see the wooden scaffolding and look at the view that they have facing this way. You've got the huge mountain and the, they can still see the, the temple. But you know, what happens if someone builds a house right here and then raises it up? Same over there, same over there. You see the basement there, hey. And yeah. I mean, right now, they have primo views and incredible privacy. Um, and here's the office um, where you can inquire, but it's, uh, it's closed today and there's a telephone number there if you do want to call them. I wonder if I get any commission. <laughs> Just kidding. So I did some digging around and with the help of my girlfriend, Miss P, we found this development's Facebook group. It's called The Happy Life Cow Co. And it is all in Thai, but you can just hit the translate button and it will give you some information. And here's what I've discovered. So it seems as though there are four designs. You buy the land and you choose a certain template. So no one's going to come in there and build some monstrosity that's not on brand with this area. You only have a choice of four houses. They're all Scandinavian. There's a Helsinki one. Copenhagen, Oslo and Stockholm. And each home looks really nice and they seem to be starting at around 7.9 million baht for the land and the home. Now, I don't know if that comes with furniture and fittings. I don't know much. Um, we did try to call them and they did say they would get back to me, but they haven't got back to us yet. So chase them up on Facebook. I mean, look, this isn't a sponsored thing or anything. I don't get anything for promoting this. I'm just keen on knowing like, okay, how much would it be to buy the land 
and then build a home. Well, it turns out you can buy the land, but you have to buy it and build one of their specific homes. So 7.9 million, or this is called 8 million baht, which is about 340,000 US dollars to buy and own the land and have the house and with that view in this area you can't really argue with that that is a higher price for Thailand by the way but I suppose it does look quite premium again you'll have to chase them up for yourself to find out more information but uh, yeah anyway let's go see the plot next door because the plot thickens <laughs> So here we are. Now this would have been exactly what we just saw. You can see the white picket fences, you can see the squares that have been sectioned off. But here on the left, there's this god awful looking coffee shop slash hotel. Then you've got someone who's built a house with a little outside pool, it's quite nice. You've got some smaller townhouse style houses going up. Someone's building a house here. The street goes up and around the back. Looks like people have been living here for some time. These might be holiday homes. People in Bangkok who want to have a house up in Pechabun. Why not? You can see the style of the house. There's an empty plot here. Looks like someone set up their business from their home here. And whatever that might be. So anyway, what you can see is there doesn't seem to be much control over what get built. Because I mean, would you want a coffee shop like that outside your beautiful new house, ruining that view? You know, if I just quickly pull over, you know, let's say I'd built my house here to face the mountain and then the coffee shop gets built next. The Fred Flintstone style rocks, which I don't know what's going on. And there's a minion there, for God's sake, you know? Stuff like that would just like ruin your view, wouldn't it? So things could go wrong. Here's another really interesting plot of land I've just driven past. Looks like this Thai guy's interested. Hello. It's a huge, huge section of land. They've got a little bit of a driveway. And then it just, this, it's this whole area. And there's a sign for sale. But yeah, the, you know, this, this, this area is my favorite, I think, in Thailand when it comes to climate and the views and the temples and the potential of buying land and I know you're in the comments going you're foreign you can't buy land I know but maybe I would buy it with my you know Thai partner or whatever and for reference here's another development uh, that we saw last time I was here I was refused entry though uh, because it is, it is a private road only residents allowed but as you can see a little bit more higher market huge lots there's water features the houses are designed and built differently it doesn't seem to be uniform people seem to have a bit more freedom I wonder if he'll let me have a look last time he said no hello buddy cow uh, can I go Okay, mate? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, last time they said absolutely not. Only residents allowed. Anyway, let's have a little look around here. Let's have a little nosy. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Little cottages. Beautiful house. Let's be super nosy. That's a nice house, isn't it? Love the garden. Nobody's got a car though. Where's everyone's cars? You know, I think if you're a millionaire in Bangkok or something, I reckon you live in Bangkok and then on the weekend you drive up here. This person's got like a wizard hat roof. <laughs> oh, it's a massive house. Not my style. Oh, oh, oh. This guy's smart. He's built his right on the lake. Yeah, I could get down with this, as long as your neighbours were fine. And, you know, everyone seems to have a lot more space, don't they? You're not confined to a, a rye here or a rye there. Uh, this one has been freshly cut, so I'd imagine uh, this is probably going to get developed soon. Not a bad view. Yeah, 
I, I could get down with this place. It's just interesting to see the difference, isn't it? And this is only five minutes up the road from where we were. There's the mountain from where we shall try and summit later. Let me show you my dream house. Somewhere where I think someone has nailed it absolutely perfectly. Gorgeous house, brilliant design, and yeah, just a whole dreamy setup. So welcome to the street <laughs> that leads to my favorite house that I've seen in Thailand, ever. This is my favorite house I've seen in Thailand. And the location is roughly in Khao Ko, up on some random little dirt track that I found. I spent hours when I was here last year searching for beautiful places to live, um, potentially one day. I just want to quickly, oh no. This was a house that I was really, um, really admiring of. And isn't that a beautiful house? But look, it's been overgrown and people used to live here. I remember there was two cars parked and the grass was all cut. Looks like it's been abandoned. Beautiful design. Doesn't have a view on this side. Maybe on the back out there it reveals a beautiful view. There's a little caravan and everything, but yeah, it looks like nobody's living here at the minute, which is sad. Because you think a beautiful house like that, they'd keep up with their garden. Look at it, it's completely overgrown. And the house that I really like is just next door. I hope nobody's in, so we can have a little nosy from outside. It's literally this house in front of us. You know, my sister's just bought a house. And um, I'm getting to that age, I think, where I'm starting to think, maybe I should have a house. <laughs> Can't just live on a motorbike all my life. Love the front garden. Doesn't look like anybody's in. The gate's closed. And I've checked, you know, on Google Maps, I've zoomed in. This is not available to rent on Airbnb or whatever. I think this is a private residence. So I'm not going to get too close, but just... Imagine something like this, you know? And these beautiful pine tree forests, you know, this really makes me feel at home. And the temperature, you know, like I said, it's nice and cool. I kind of wish I had a hoodie on, to be honest. Let's quickly nip back to the hotel room, dump this because we don't want any extra weight because we're going up a massive mountain. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. So yeah, if you remember the mountain in the background of the beautiful temple that overlooks the entire area of Khao Ko, I thought we could go up there. I'd seen on Google Maps that there was a country road that goes up and over some of the hills up the mountain ridge. And there were photos and reviews from other riders who said that the road was really hard, but worth the journey. So once I dumped my back box to lighten Zelda's load to make her a little bit more agile, I started the trail. It was gonna take about an hour and it was immediately a bog. So much mud and swamps and the road was just destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, I've definitely, definitely bitten off <laughs> more than I can chew here, Paddy Doyle. Well, this is a little bit annoying. I've just driven across this we are not looking good and we're nowhere near the road to the mountain i mean this is not a road is it oh god okay is this a road or is this the rocks on time mouth beach i mean look at the state This can't be the road, can it? I mean, it's literally just slabs of rock. Oh! I feel like I'm driving up a waterfall. I think we have to go right here through the... Okay, we've got to get this just right. Ah! Woo! <laughs> uh, okay, I can deal with this, obviously, but... 
If it gets much worse, we might have to cancel this sunset to the top of the mountain, unfortunately. Because I've got the right bike, but I'm a bit low on confidence. It's funny, a couple of videos ago, I was praising the Department of Rural Roads. But I don't think they got the memo about this one. state of this. Jeez. Oh, Where am I getting? I mean, look at the state of this. it's sand. Ooh. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Look at this. Um, but I just don't think I have the skills. Let me fly the drone. Let's see if this section of the road, which is just completely ridiculous. Let's just see if it, it maybe it gets better. I can see the mountain up there. So if it's like this the whole way, I don't really think there's much chance of us getting up there. Um, even though I've got the right bike, I'm not the right rider. Okie dokie, there's the drone. If you're wondering, by the way, I have a DJI Mini 3 Pro. Isn't she beautiful? Right, let's see what we're working with here beyond this river. Go have a look. Am I in the way? Okay, there you go. So we go up over the old river. Yeah, straight, pretty straightforward. Now look how far away that mountain is. Oh my God. It says 11 minutes according to Google. There's no chance. Right then, so we go around the corner. It's still all broken. Looks okay there. Look, there's somebody there. I lose signal because I've gone behind that mountain. You need to keep it, you need to keep a line of sight. Otherwise they just uh, go crazy and fly home, which they can do um, by themselves, but uh, it's not worth it. Oh my God, are you kidding me? There's a dude with his wife. And if they can make it, maybe I can make it right here. Which way are they going to go now? That looks so hard. Is he going to come this way? I think he's going to come this way. Isn't the quality of the picture incredible? It shoots in 4K 60 frames a second. So you can do like slow motion stuff like this. Isn't that so cinematic? <laughs> you know, we can get a cool shot of the, uh, of the farmers coming through the ford. Hello. 
Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I mean, if an old man carrying his little old deer can make it, surely he can make it. Because up here, the road, where's the road? So the road goes up there, and then it goes up, up, it goes up that valley, and it must make its way up this mountain. And then if you look now directly in the middle there, that peak, that peak overlooks the place I'm staying. And I thought it'd be the best place to watch sunset ever. Um, I'm just trying to figure out. Let's go at the top of this hill up there and see what the road situation is beyond this hill. Oh, you can see in the distance there is a road that leads up towards the thing. Look, there it is again, coming up over the over the lip of this little hill now. There's the road. That might be that little fella's house. And then the road continues up and up and up and up and up and up. There's a couple of roads there, make sure I'm on the right one. And then it goes up the ridge. Right, I've made a decision that, you know, this is called Next Level Adventures. So let's have an adventure. Let's go up a little bit more. Let's see how it progresses. And then we don't have to be silly beggars. We're not going to do anything stupid. Oh, oh put my foot down. I got a wet sock. That's a good start. Margin for error here is very slim because there seems to be one little line, this one yellow patch. I mean, have a look at this turn up here. I mean, what the frick! So, yeah, I think you can see this kind of road, this surface is my limit when it comes to my skill on a little bike and I struggled my way up and up and up for about another 15 minutes. My GoPros were playing up, the mounts for some reason aren't super tight and any bumpy roads that I normally drive on make the GoPros tilt up and down and this road was so, so, so bumpy that I just basically got no good footage unfortunately. And further up the road, I just, yeah, I gave up. What is this? of no return this is where that even the locals get off and walk let's have a little look the one thing that i have to think about as well is actually going up is a lot easier because i'm using the engine to rev me up but coming down i'm going to be having to rely on braking and skidding on rocks and things like that and when you're going downhill it's a lot more dangerous isn't it and difficult I mean, look at this bridge. So the road goes over this dodgy looking bridge. It goes around there and then it goes up about this. It's literally vertical going up that thing. There's absolutely no chance. I would need one of those sand buggies. Okie dokie, I'm gonna call it here. There's no chance that I'm gonna continue up. I just don't have the skill. I'm really sorry. I'm, look, I'm sure you're not subscribed to me to learn how to ride a motorbike off road because that's not what I can do. I can't do that. I can't do that, I'm not very good. If you would like to try this road, I'll, I'll leave the description. I'll leave the link in the description, sorry, so you can follow it up there to the top because I think the view would be amazing. If you do make it up there, if you are experienced and you have the skills, please let me know. Tag me on Instagram if you make it to the top. I'd love to see someone else up there, but I, can't, I just can't make it, even with a beautiful, rugged off-road bike like Zelda is. I think I've met my limit. Sometimes it's important to learn your limits. As I'm getting older, I'm getting more boring. When I was young, I would have gone up there like, yeah, whatever, we can do it. <laughs> it would be funny. But a sprained ankle or a torn knee ligament, trying to rescue the bike if I drop it isn't funny. <laughs> Sound like my dad. Okay. 
that was Pechabun. That was a review of the area that I love and that I'm thinking about moving to. Or maybe, maybe buying land. What do you think? Would you come live in this area? Not this particular area. Why is my bike going backwards? <laughs> I'm gonna leave, leave it here. Love you, thank you. See you in the next video. One more video, I promise, before we go into Laos. Um, it might be from Udon, or it might be the crossing the border episode. Because we're, we're kind of there now. And I, yeah, I just want to get to Laos. Thanks for watching. If I made it to the bottom and got home safe, then you would have seen this video and you know everything's fine. Lots of love. Bye.